Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this nice looking Adobe Acrobat Reader logo inside Microsoft Word using Visual Basic for Applications that is using Macros. And you can take a quick guess which one is the right one. It's very easy today because we will not create an exact shape today inside Microsoft Word. We will just try to get somehow similar shape. So the right one is the logo from oh, the real logo. The le middle and the left ones are created inside Microsoft Word. Today we will create this, this middle logo. So let's start not with a blank document, but I will start with my previous tutorial about cre creating blobs and badges because we will reuse part of the code. Before we will do or write anything, let's talk about a shape called epitrochoid. If you look at the Wikipedia, you can see we have a bigger circle, then we have a smaller circle, and inside this smaller circle there is a point which traces the outline, and you can get really nice looking shapes. We will do it or we will use this one in, in today's tutorial. Actually it will not be the epitrochoid shape, but it will be the hypotrochoid shape. In this case the smaller circle is inside the bigger circle, but if I can, if I could get, you know, between those two pages you can see that the parametric equation formula is very similar the only difference is there are the plus and minus signs in a little bit different places so I'm pretty sure we can use the epitrochoid uh, formula just plugging in the negative value for one of the radiuses so I will open the epitrochoid equation on the Desmos which is pretty cool because you can actually see how the shape will look like and the parameter A just traces the outline. Then we have the big R, which is the radius of the small of the bigger circle in the middle. The small R, which is the radius of the other, other circle, and the D is the position of the point inside the smaller circle. So if I make the bigger one, bigger, bigger circle much bigger, like this, and also the smaller one, and I set the D to be zero, it will be exactly in the middle. You can see that the final shape is just in circle. We want, as I've, we've said previously, we want the smaller radius to be, uh, the smaller circle to be inside. So we will set the small r value to be a, my, a negative value like this. And then we will play with the parameter d. And you can see that we are just changing the shape. We probably need to make the smaller circle much smaller like this. And then we can play the parameter d going from like, I don't know, maybe a, like a squares or so to the shapes similar to the Acrobat logo. Now we want only three of those parts, so we have to set the small radius like this. Actually there is also an equation, if we set the small radius to be three times smaller than the bigger one, we will get three different spikes. So if I set this to be, for example, six, I can set the smaller one to be minus two, and I should get three spikes. Then of course I have to adjust the parameter D to value where it kind of resembles the Adobe Acrobat logo like this. And I'm pretty happy with the result of this shape. I want this shape to be used inside Microsoft Word. So all I have to do is to open my previous document for drawing blobs and badges. I will delete everything. I will open the macros for drawing those polygons and it's a very simple macro where I just convert from uh, polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. I will not do this conversion today. I will not use radius at all. And I will not do any conversion from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. But instead I will plug in those parametric equations from Wikipedia. So I'll take this part. I want to set the X and Y points. But I need few more variables. If I quick, if I make this a little bit, sorry, if I make it a little bit smaller, I can probably show the Wikipedia page together with the with the code. So I'll do it like this so I can see the equation. Okay, so we need the big R, the small R and the D parameters. So let's call those value R big, for example, S double, value R S double and value D S double. And I will set those to our previous values. So if I open the decimal space, uh, uh, decimal page, I was using the values six, minus two, and minus three. So I will plug in, uh, sorry, six for big R. For R, it will be minus two, and for D, it will be three. 
I'll just double check. 6, minus 2, and minus 3, not 3, minus 3. Okay, I'll jump back to Wikipedia page and just retype this uh, formula, those two formulas into our code. So I'll probably put this a little bit below and I will plug in that x equals big R plus the small r times cosine the angle, we already have the angle from our previous tutorial, minus d times cosine the big R plus small r, I'll put this inside the brackets, divided by the small r again, multiplied by the angle, multiplied by the angle, and I will close the brackets like this, it should be fine. And I will use the very same formula, except the only difference is not the cosine function, but the sine function is used for this. So sine function for here and sine function here. I will delete this old conversion from the previous tutorial, so it's not confusing us in any way. And I believe that's all that's needed to draw the shape. I will make the line visible and set the line width to maybe three or so. So if I run this macro, hopefully I should get some shape. I don't see anything, that's because the shape is around zero, zero point, so I have to move it, and I will move it just like we've moved everything else. I will just add the x origin to x value, and I will add the y origin to y value, like this. So we have a shape, it's nice, but it's very, very tiny. So we probably want to make it bigger. I can maybe multiply it, everything by some certain value, or I can make the values like 10 times bigger, so 60 minus 20 and minus 30. And voila, we are getting some shape which is kind of similar to the Adobe Acrobat logo. I will just change the fill to no fill, and I will probably rotate it by 30 or so degrees. And just to make sure that it looks like Adobe Acrobat logo, I will insert a new rectangle, like this. I will send it to back, open the format shape properties, so I'll right click and select format shape, I will set the line to be a red line, I already have this red color predefined, it's RGB values of 255, 53 and 0, and I will make it much bolder, maybe like 10 points. For the fill I will use a gradient fill, which goes from middle to the outer sides like this, this is the standard gradient, but I will change the gradient stops from very dark brown color to even darker colors, like like this. So there is a little bit of light on the top. Of course for this in between, you know, inner shape I will change the fill, oh, sorry no, not the fill but the line to be white and I will probably change the width to maybe I don't know six or so points. And that's it, we have a nice looking Adobe Acrobat logo shape inside Microsoft Word using the epitrochoid or, or the hypotrochoid shape and formula. Of course, you are not tied to just this, you know, particular shape. You can change the R, big R, small R, and D parameters to get any shape which you can draw using this uh, Desmos formula. So in here, you can decide which shape you want to draw, and you just plug in those values back, and you get the shape. So if you want, you can get like this nice, I don't know, play button, if you can call it this way, and you just plug in different values, 6, minus 2, and 1.1. 1 .1. So if I can quickly try it, 6, minus 2, and 1.1, 1 .1. we already have this pre-multiplied by 10, so 11 instead. Was it minus? No, it's plus, so it's plus 11. And if I run this, you know, I get a nice play button, or whatever we call this shape. And that's it for today's tutorial, thanks for watching.